This is the ROG Ally in 2024. If you know me, well, you know that I'm a gamer. And recently I have been using the Asus ROG Ally. And just so you know, this review comes from a person that plays games regularly and also has the PS5, Xbox Series X, Nintendo Switch OLED, and plays on a nice OLED LG TV. So this is where I'm coming from, coming into this review with the Asus ROG Ally. So first off, you probably know that this is a handheld PC. This is not just a console compared to the other ones that I mentioned. This is actually a full-fledged, you know, PC. When you turn it on, you will see a Windows 11 and, you know, the desktop as a normal PC. It only is like a body of a handheld device, which let's go over first the way it looks like, because I feel like this looks very similarly to something like a Steam Deck or the Nintendo Switch. You know, this is going to be, first thing you're going to think about is a handheld device, handheld gaming system. And to be honest, that is a little bit far from the truth. This is much more like a laptop in the body of a handheld console. And because of that, there are good and bad sides of it being a PC. And the first thing you're going to notice is this is not a pick up and play. A system like a Nintendo Switch where you just pick it up, it's gonna do its own updates, you just put in a cartridge with a game and you're ready to go. This is more like playing on a PC, you have to update the drivers, the software, you know, the Windows and also the Asus, AMD, everything in between, you have to update them separately, you have to make sure everything just works fine, you have to actually go into settings in different games to make them work as good as they could possibly. So this makes it that it's a little bit more than a just a pick up and play kind of a system. This is more like having a pretty much PC in the palm of your hand. And while we're on the topic of how it is and how it looks like, how it works, well, it is a body, what do you would think of a handheld device that would play games? And on the back, you'll notice that there are two extra buttons. This has a normal traditional layout with analog sticks, D-pad, and the four buttons. You also have the bumpers and the triggers on the top. On the back you have two additional remappable buttons, so it's kind of like a nice setup to play games right away. And it's very cool for, you know, shooter games and that kind of stuff to have a little bit more, you know, ease of use when shooting so you don't have to move your thumb from that button. I wish there was four because I'm used to playing with four, but let's be honest, Two is more than enough. On the front, you will also find the speakers, which are right here. And to be honest, that is one of the things that really shocked us because the speakers here are amazing. Those speakers work so, so well. Because there are two of them and they're on the front and the way you pretty much hold it like this, it's a perfect distance that it sounds like a surround system. They're really good. Really enjoyed the experience from those speakers. And close to that, we have this screen. It's a full HD screen with up to 120 frames per second and it's really cool because we can really up you know when playing like shooters you can really take advantage of that and because it's a full hd screen on the games that don't require too much power you can really push it into like a full hd 60 frames per second gameplay for example the older games but if you want to scale it down you can go for 900p or 720p so that you have more battery and more power real gamers need power ROG Ally is power. And also you have the VRR, which means that if you have any frame drops, this actually compensates for you. If it's over 40 frames per second, the VRR works, which makes it look so much smoother and you will not notice all those frame drops as you would normally do. There's also two more buttons on the side of the screen. Those two are pretty much like the options and select on the normal controllers. And the other two are for the armory crate, which is the software side from the ROG Ally, where you can pretty much have like a library of your games and the settings for this device. Overall, the ergonomics of this device is very nice. It's not too heavy, it's not too big, it is big enough to make it comfortable and you know, just make sense in your hand. Like I said, it's not heavy, so it's nice for longer play sessions. It's ergonomic in my opinion, and from what we both tested with Eevee, we both like the ergonomics of it, and it just feels not too bulky, not too big compared to competition. But one thing that I wish they actually included in the box was a proper case. There is no case for this device included. You have to buy it separately. And one more thing that I kind of wish was a little bit different is the built-in SSD. It is a 500 
GB SSD, you know, getting modern games like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, or Warzone, then having something like Genshin Impact, and adding in another, like, let's say Battlefield, Warframe, whatever you're gonna play, something that is a little bit more modern and bigger, those games tend to be like 80 gigabytes or even 100 gigabytes in some cases, so you're pretty much gonna really quickly fill this thing up. And then what if you're a gamer like me, that sometimes you want to have some shooting and sometimes you want to have some adventures and you want to play Assassin's Creed. Well, it's gonna be hard to have too many games and especially if you like different kind of games, so you want to have a little bit more installed on it, well, that could be a problem. But overall, I think it's a great piece of a device for like an extra console. In theory, this could replace a lot of things like a laptop, desktop to PC, gaming console, you know, everything like a handheld, this pretty much can do it all. But because it's a jack of all trades, it means that sometimes there are gonna be different things that are not as good compared to the real counterpart. Well, this is not a laptop, you cannot have a keyboard and mouse and everything set up in a second, and for maybe editing it's gonna be just better because of a bigger screen. Well, let's say you're gaming on a bigger, beefier PC, it's gonna probably be, be better, but it cannot be taken out. So it's like always a plus and a minus, and I feel like this is a beautiful jack of all trades if you want to have something that is good in everything, but maybe not the best at anything. Overall, the performance is amazing. I've been able to play games that, you know, casual games, you can play like indie games, that sells, works great, with 120 frames per second it looks really good, but then you turn on something like Genshin Impact which runs at a nice high quality settings and at 60 frames per second which makes it look so so good. But then you open up something like Call of Duty Warzone and you can actually play it on this device. I've been playing the Call of Duty Warzone on this and the only caveat I would say is the smaller screen means that it's harder to see and there's a little bit of fiddling with the settings and you know connection to make it work as best as it can. So I would say it's good for something like a multiplayer in shooters where the maps are a little bit smaller so you see a little bit better but if you want to have the pretty much the same exact settings that you have on your PS5 for example with a higher field of view this small screen is gonna be a caveat. I still say it's incredible to see a full-fledged Call of Duty Warzone experience on a handheld device like this. But one thing that I don't like about this is compared to like a console where you can get a physical CD of a game, or you just download it for one account, but all the accounts on your PlayStation or Xbox Series X, S, well, all of the accounts pretty much have the access to the game that you bought. Here, it's a different story. Because it's a PC, sometimes you want to buy a game and that company doesn't let you use it on other accounts. So basically you have to buy each game for every account to have it work. And this is a problem when you want to play something like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If there is two people in your household and you wanted to have this as your like, you know, handheld device in your bed or somewhere outside or just, you know, laying on the couch and having this as your device for that game, here comes the problem. On the PS5 or Xbox Series S, you can play it on all the accounts. If you get it once, you have everything for everyone. But then you want to play here. And yes, you have to buy the game again. I guess that's a given because that's a different platform. But then you would have to buy again for each account. Because you cannot actually use the same game on every account on that system. So yes, I just said about a certain game, but that can happen to almost every game. And even if you're not talking about cross-progression from a different console to this and having this as a handheld, you'd still sometimes have to get the game twice for every user or try to fiddle around with having, you know, different alternatives, like different saves. Like there's always different things that you have to kind of work around with this device. And that is pretty much like the whole thing about this device. Almost everything you do, turns out to be fiddling around. So if you like something that is, you know, just pick up and play, this might not be it for you. This might be a little bit too much of, you know, playing around with the settings, both for the setup, for the settings inside, the settings in game, everything has to be, you know, played around with to get the optimal, you know, playthrough. So it's a really kind of like a mixed bag of a device, kind of like a real jack of all trades. It has so many different good things about it, but then there are things that just make it a little bit harder and a little bit more confusing to make it work just seamlessly. And while this does look like a normal handheld, like a Nintendo Switch, it isn't something that you can just buy and start playing right away. 
One thing that I wish this had was a real way to do sleep. Well, on other consoles, for example Nintendo Switch, you can just turn off the screen and then pick it back up and start playing again the way you were before. On this, you know, the sleep function on PC is kind of a different beast, something is good, something is bad, it's not consistent, and then turning it off and on is again, you know, time consuming. I know it's a nitpick, but at the same time it does feel a little bit less seamless, you have to turn it on again, wait for it to boot up, then put the game up, everything seems a little bit longer. But I would still say it's great for extra console, and if you can get it to work, especially if you have something like Xbox Series S and you already have the Game Pass Ultimate, you can actually have it on this too, and you get three mounts for free when getting the Asus Rogue Ally, but it's really cool because some games like Forza Horizon 5 or the Ori series, you can actually cross progress playing on your Xbox and then playing on here where you left off, which is really cool and you also have a full library of games right away. A lot of people just go over the aspect that it, this can do everything, but I feel like this really could replace a lot of things in your household, this really could be like an one device for everything. You could literally try editing videos on it, you can really just make this your PC. If you dock it, use an external monitor and you can really have this like an experience that would have everything for gaming, you know, external controller and then hooking it up to a TV or a monitor and you have a gaming setup at home. Pick it up and have a switch, you know, put a keyboard and mouse external monitor and we have an editing setup. This is a very versatile device. But being versatile and this strong in a such small body means that the battery is gonna suffer and I would say this is the biggest caveat of this device. So far it was not a problem for us but we usually played it like you know on a couch or on a bed and we didn't really care if we had to put it back into you know plugging it in. But playing older games like I was playing the Batman Arkham Asylum recently or Evie was playing the Ori series which aren't as demanding. You can put it into the 10 watt mode, it can really hold up for much longer. And this having amazing speakers, Full HD, 120Hz display, the VRR, which makes the gaming much smoother, so even if you have some lags or spikes, different frame drops, you're not gonna notice that, which is really, really cool. In one way, this is a device that I see as like dream country device, and I cannot wait to see what the next iterations of these kind of device, the PC handhelds, are gonna be like. Because we're getting close to something that I thought was impossible. I remember back in the day getting the Nintendo Switch and saying to Eevee, what if I could play games like The Division, Call of Duty and all the other AAA games on a handheld like this? That would be a dream and suddenly we are in an age where we actually can do that in a way. So overall, how do I rate it in 2024? I think it's a beautiful device. I think the updates really made it into a little bit better of a system. It is going to be depending on who you are and what you're doing with it. If you want to use it alongside with a different kind of a device like Xbox Series X and you already have the Game Pass, it's going to be a beautiful you know, combination. Or if you want to have like cross progression from different games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If you want to have a little bit more users, it might be a little bit more finicky, a little bit more things to play around with. With, but overall I would say it's a great piece of a device if you're looking for a PC handheld and especially given that this one is a little bit smaller, a little bit quieter and just works really really well. And pretty much any game that I thrown at it was working great. Sometimes I would have to play around with the settings to get the best out of it but overall the experience is always amazing. With that being said that's gonna be the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again and I'll see you next time.